The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. You're listening to Wrestling to the Max. Alert, alert, clear all channels. This is an exclusive. How you like that? John Garmer, and Paul Leeser. King of Spot. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Hello and welcome to the This Wrestling to the Max Extra. We're talking about New Japan's G1 Climax 27, Night 6. Of course, this is a B Block show. Why I could not remember that <laughs> right then. <laughs> I don't know why. But uh, of course, I'm your host, Sean Garman, here with me, Mr. Paul Deezer. Hey, yo. So we had uh, after a fantastic night of Block A action and then Block B, of course, delivering uh, probably what could be, if not the best, right up there as uh, one of the two best matches of the entire tournament. Of course, I'm talking about Michael Elgin and Kazuchika Okada. If you still haven't watched that match, you need to go watch that. Uh, pause this. Go watch that right now and then go back and, and either watch Night 6 or, you know, you can keep listening. Whichever you so desire, but you really need to go uh, watch that. So, we, uh, of course, we have tag matches before this. Anything of note? Uh, so nothing big story-wise happening. Uh, Makabe and Ibushi had a brawl as well as uh, Naito and Nagata. Uh, Naito seemed really focused on disrespecting Blue Justice, which, of course, will not go well for him tonight, I would uh, assume. And Hiromu just comes out carrying nothing now, and it's incredibly sad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then all the young lions are great on this show, too. Uh, Kitamura and Oka tag up against Ishii and Yoshihashi and put on quite a performance, if I do say so myself. But nothing super or shattering or anything like that. I did see uh, people. It seems like the the like people that get on about uh, how we say all oh, New Japan is very sports oriented or or whatever, and then they they throw up the whole oh, but here's everybody like in the fourth day of mourning that a stuffed cat. <laughs> yeah. I was like. Why? Come on, they're not perfect. They do have a more sports orientation, but uh, sometimes you gotta have things like this. Look, you got a guy right. that hits somebody with their ass all the time. I mean, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's a uh, it's a company too that realizes it's starting to attract a very large Western audience, and they're catering to that somewhat too. So, I think uh, I think that should be very much taken into account. Even though we do say this is very much a sports presentation, which it is. I think if you still watch it, you get that, but. Um, there's a lot of acts on here that have taken a lot of the Western stuff that they've seen on excursion or, or brought with them uh, in the case of the Gaussians. Exactly. And, you know, speaking of a, a Western man, Michael Elgin starts us off. Uh, the Canadian takes on the strong arm Satoshi Kojima, and they go on to have a really good match here. Uh, what? I'm sorry, you said strong arm, and I immediately started picturing those lawyer commercials here in Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that guy. 
Good old Brian Lockhart. Yes. This is all going way over your head. (laughs) He's still doing those commercials? Great. He is. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. (laughs) The most, my favorite ones were the, uh, oh, I don't remember his name, but when he would do the the guy with the glasses, uh, like when we were growing up, he was uh, very popular. He would do it in Spanish. Yeah. And he had the. In Spanish. That was him. uh, Oh, and he, it was. (laughs) It's awful. Awful. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> so I just like, wow, his accent is horrible. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sure Kojima could probably speak better English than that guy could speak Spanish. I think so, I like Kojima representing me more in the in the courtroom than I would Lon Car as well. <laughs> yes, because he would uh, certainly intimidate you. Uh, you know, Western he just theory, you don't acquit. Yeah, he would. Uh, he would. He'll take that elbow pad off and be like, "This is coming for you right now." If you, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, not <guilty>. yeah, <laughs> not not guilty of, uh, but uh, yeah, this is this is a terrific uh, back and forth match. I loved Elgin doing the chops in the corner. That was that was great. Uh, it just you don't see that like ever. Somebody do. Kojima's chops to him or whatever. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, Elgin, of course, doing all his big moves. And uh, Kojima hits a nasty lariat at one point, making you think, oh, man, he's going to get this. But uh, right when Kojima goes to go to the top to set him up for, I'm guessing, like a big uh, brain buster off there or something, Elgin takes advantage, hits a big sunset bomb, and then the Elgin bomb and gets the win. Just too much power for for Kojima to overcome here. And Elgin happens to get his first win of the tournament here. I, like you, I loved this match too. Lots of big lariats, lots of big moves. Guys just, I mean, really going out there and just hitting each other very, very hard. Uh, Which I feel like is, if you're watching Puro, that's that's what you want to see. These guys don't skip on that at all. And I, you know, the crowd was really into this too, which was helpful. Elgin coming off that phenomenal match, obviously, and Kojima's just beloved uh, no matter where you go. So, uh, yeah, and Tenzon was out there with him too. Absolutely, so. I think Tenzon's been out there for every match so far, though, hadn't he? This, I feel like this is the first time I've seen him. Like he might have been there, but they, the camera focused on him this time. So, for sure, yeah. I mean, Kojima took a, a nasty, nasty move on the apron and looked like he died. Pretty much, and Tenzon mm-hmm. and the referee were like, "Oh, he might actually be dead." <laughs> yeah. Tenzon's got that look, like, "Oh, hey, oh uh, boy," <laughs> like, "Watch out here, uh, we might have to be calling uh, some medical people in." And mm-hmm. Thankfully, uh, he was okay. Of course, this means Elgin gets his first two points of the tournament, and Satoshi Kojima unfortunately continues with a big goose egg. Uh, so, veterans. Not doing, uh, you know, the the older veterans uh, mm-hmm. not doing so hot. Yeah, the, um, you know, and, and that's, I think that's what a lot of people expected, right? There's so much other talent in here that I think they're so focused on that it's it's not, you know, it's obviously not Nagata's time anymore. It's not really Kojima's anymore, too. But I wager Kojima will get some points eventually. It's just a long line of people who he could possibly beat or further down. Yeah. Uh, certainly for him. He just kind of got into a... You have to factor that Elgin's got to get some points here, especially after what he put on with Okada. Oh. He, he's not getting zeros. Match is still giving me chills. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's, hey, I'm still... I have, I dreamt about it, I think. I woke up oh, this nice. morning thinking thinking about that match. So, uh, you know, I don't know that we're going to be thinking too much about this match, though. Tama Tonga against Evil, two heels going at it from two different factions. Of course, Tonga from the Bullet Club and mm-hmm. Evil from Los Ingobernables de Japón. Uh, so, with a, they tease a count-out spot. That, of course, doesn't happen here. Uh, we will get one later that we're going to talk about. And uh, a missing the corner, uh, that avalanche splash that sort of Tonga does, running the the stinger splash, if uh, that works better for you. Uh, Evil sort of starts getting his stuff in, especially the the big chair spot. Uh, Tonga gets out of the submission. 
Uh, you get some big moves. Uh, I, I love that apparently Tonga needs to, to do the Superman punch. Uh, yes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, commentary marked for to Superman punch! <laughs> <laughs> it's like... Might as well just start mentioning Roman Reigns too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, evil is uh, evil, and uh, Tonga do a bunch of reversals from the the gun stun and uh, the evil, and then eventually evil puts him away. It, it was a good match. I I didn't think uh, this like hit that second gear or whatever, but still good. And evil gets now he's got four points. Yeah, this is a little bit on the shorter end, uh, close to 11 minutes, uh, and I think most of the mid-card stuff has gotten somewhere in that area, 13 to 15 for the most part. So, um, you know, this this was still very good. I especially love the ending stretch whenever they get into all the reversals after everything. I feel like it it was starting to pick up and flow, and that's when uh, Evil finally had enough and decided to uh, let Tonga know that everything, of course, is evil. And, um, you know, realistically, they're just here playing the hits almost, which is which is fine. I think it worked out very well for both guys. Yeah, I agree. It it kind of felt like that. Just I wouldn't want to say going through the motions, but they were just hitting the stuff you'd expect. Mm -hmm. Evil's going to win. And, you know, it just seems different from the Tongo we got against Kenny Omega. I guess much different motivations there, obviously. But, yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, so you know, we like you said uh, the, the on the previous show, Minoru Suzuki had worked on Juice Robinson's leg uh, during the tag match, and that comes into play almost immediately here for Minoru Suzuki. As uh, hey, Suzuki Gun, we attack people. That's what we do. Juice doesn't even get to make his entrance, and he's already going after that leg. And mm-hmm. so, pretty much, he just he works on the leg. Uh, for a lot of this match, other than when uh, Juice forces him to stop because he's he's going for his offense. Uh, and he does get some uh, stuff in here. You know, he gets that cannonball and the, the big suplex and everything. But uh, then Suzuki is able to go right after that knee. The putting the leg into that, uh, into the barricade spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, was was pr- like if you're thinking about it just from perspective of man if your leg is really tore up that's gotta suck uh, badly I love the pole friction counter uh, into the sleeper uh, by Suzuki that was some great stuff and then Suzuki just he knew he had juice and you know where he wanted him and he's just like I'm just gonna take my time with this Scotch pile driver mm-hmm. like I don't give a shit. He's going down, so... <laughs> I mean, nothing worse about making you think about your impending doom than letting you hang there for a couple seconds and then just spiking him. <laughs> yeah. Just almost uh, like in slow motion. like. Pfft. Yeah. Like, he, you know, he's re- he was ready to murder Juice. That was all this was. Um, obviously, the attack the night before helped a lot, and he continued to focus on that. This almost read to me like the match with Sonata, where Juice is... Not necessarily trying to play his game, but he's fighting from underneath, and Suzuki is just uh, too much of a badass, too too great, to whatever you want to say. But on this night, he was better, uh, and simply, I I think pretty much dominated for most of the twelve minutes with Juice getting in his hope spots, and that's all this really was. And I think that's fine. I think Suzuki, they want Suzuki to look strong moving forward, obviously because he's got a lot of bigger opponents down the road still, but. Um, I think Juice was still great here, and now he's got a big injury that he can work with going forward, which will which will be really fun to watch. Yeah, certainly. I I kind of thought maybe Juice would get a lot closer, like maybe pull a surprise and and be one of the guys challenging Suzuki or anything. But uh, mm-hmm. that fortunately did not come to pass for the man. He already did get a never title shot, so of course, you know, uh, weird to see them usually have the same challenger twice, but. Yeah, I mean, this worked, like you said, Zuki coming in there and just beating guys. Nothing wrong with that. Mm-mm. He, he's he got bigger fish to fry. Right. And then we get to this match. We knew there was going to be stuff going on. 
Uh, there was quite a bit of stuff going on. I, you know, if you were watching this live, uh, this certainly woke you up because there, you were confused probably by uh, half of this. So it's Kenny Omega and Toriyanu. You know, Kenny Omega, of course, used to be in DDT doing comedy matches. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did some of this stuff when he was a junior as well. And of course, this is Yano's uh, right up his alley. Uh, right, so you know he wanted to give Omega a DVD, <laughs> and Omega was like, hey, you know, I don't, I don't want this man, and it, it, it was Yano's just pulling him so he could do the. Uh, I was thinking of Mr. Fuji the whole time, <laughs> the powder in the face, and man, it just uh, he took a whole bunch of that powder in the face. And he did. <laughs> Yano just uh, takes advantage. Uh, with a low blow and getting the near falls. And then he goes and does all four. He undoes all four buckle pads. And Omega's still sitting there like, oh, my God, I can't see. I can't see. They do a do si do in the, the turnbuckles, literally. Like, it was like they kept turning each other and whatever. And finally, Yano hits the, um, it hits the buckle. They try to each person grab the other's hair. To knock the other one down. It's, it's just so stupid. And, uh, uh, you know, Yano uh, tries to tape Omega's, uh, like, ankles and feet to the apron. Uh, that doesn't quite work. So then, or it does. And then Omega tapes Yano's legs together. <laughs> And so Omega is such a great man that he actually, they do the uh, beginning of a match with Omega's uh, feet taped up and they do the drop down and Omega jumps over and the crowd actually gets really (laughs) into this. It's, it's again, so dumb, but the crowd eats it up. And then uh, Chase Owen shows up with scissors to get uh, Omega out of it. Then he, uh, Yano can't get the scissors and eventually uh, Omega hits V-Triggers, and uh, he gets he doesn't actually get to pin Yano. Yano's leg, uh, he fell down, and he can't get up because his feet are still tied. So it's count out for Yano. Uh, well, <laughs> if there was ever a time to do a count out finish, this is, I don't know. <laughs> that just capitalized on the... Okay then, that was a yeah. match. <laughs> that that this certainly was uh, something. Uh, <laughs> the entertainment is, is definitely on display here, right? If you're looking for what probably should have happened, and that's Omega running Yano over in about four minutes, you're not getting that. Uh, <laughs> Ten minutes. Lots of silliness. Red Shoes getting involved, which is always fun. <laughs> Red Shoes almost eats a one wing angel. Could you imagine if that would uh, happen? What I mean, he's already had a pretty rough tournament too. He's eating a V trigger, like. <laughs> um, I you know, th- I thought this was fine for what it was. I see Larry's point uh, over on four hundred one. He he was he gave this a dud because he thought that Omega really should have just squashed Yano and, and moved on. And, and and to to that point, that's that's fair. Um, I, I I mean, this isn't awful by any stretch of the imagination. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be into this. I kind of see it both ways. Like it's it's different, and I think that's what's the point here because you're gonna watch so much wrestling back to back to back to back to back so often during this month that keeping it fresh, keeping different styles in front of you, showing you that they're more than just you know guys here to run you over. I, I think that's important, especially moving as we get further on in the tournament. So. I don't have a problem with this here. I, I just kind of do wish that maybe they shaved off some time here, as I've been saying with all the auto matches, because they've all gone 10 minutes, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, they've given him a lot of time here uh, to go do his shtick, and I wouldn't say it obviously doesn't wear it out. It's welcome with the crowd. They like it. They loved uh, it, yeah. But for the people that are watching this and, you know, you're kind of like, oh, well, I got to watch the rest of these matches and this thing's kind of here. And, you know, it's they did it do a good job at times of like Yano almost got some some near falls. You're like, oh, my God, could mm-hmm. he be the one that beats Omega or something? 
Uh, but no, you know, Omega eventually wins, but just they took a little bit too long to get there. Yes, I completely agree. Uh, but hey, again, they save us with this main event. Uh, we talked about how Sonata could be a guy uh, that takes Okada to a limit. Unfortunately, he is not the one that triggers the upset uh, for Okada. So Okada gets a win. But he, again, just like with the Elgin match, had to work for it. Uh, Mm -hmm. Not as great as the Elgin match, but still a great match in its own right. Sonata really had uh, the the upper hand for a large part of it. He he is able to just kind of counter a lot of what Okada was doing. Of course, they wrestle similarly. They're the same age. Uh, So, you know. Lots going on here for both guys, but Sonata was able to just kind of counter a lot of what Okada was doing, and so much so that he made Okada have to think about, man, I'm really going to have to put this guy away. Mm -hmm. And he has to pull out three Rainmakers to put Sonata down. Sonata just didn't want to go away. Um, I, I thought that this might have been an upset. I picked Sonata to win here on my predictions, too, which turns out to be wrong because they're telling a very different story than the one I was expecting. And Sonata, I think, looked great here, right? I, and we know these two, I, they've had great chemistry in the past. I think they wrestle very similarly. Lots of, uh, you know, they like to, to mix in a lot of different styles to create what they do, and they end up with something pretty close to each other, so... Um, they're both the same age, they're nearly the same height, like, it's almost wrestling a clone of yourself at mm-hmm. times, and I feel like that they produced maybe one of their best matches that they've had together. Uh, certainly, I think this was, I think they wrestled last year in the G1, too. I felt like this was better than the last time I saw them in the ring together, so I, I have no problem with this. Sonata looks super strong. It took three Rainmakers. He dominated a lot of the match. I also like that they're keeping up the story of Okada seems to be uh, you know, dragging and dragging and just tiring out as he goes because these matches are going, all of them really for him so far in the tournament, except for his first night. I've gone over 20 minutes. Um, and the other one was pushing the time limit with Elgin. So I thought uh, I thought this was really, really good. I'd recommend it too. I don't know if this cracks match of the year contention, but it's, it's damn good. Yeah, certainly, again, a, a great match in its own right. I kind of agree with Larry in the the four star territory. Yeah, I think that's right too. The it just like I, I think Sonata in a way is a little bit smoother than Okada if you're gonna make a, a slight distinction between the two guys. But like, just it's so eerie how similar <laughs> they are to each yeah. other. And uh, I I thought that maybe. This would be one where, you know, knowing that Sonata uses the the skulls in, that Okada might pull out the red ink, mm-hmm. uh, but he didn't. So, you know, but still, I, I like the, just the way that he, they made Sonata look great here. Again, don't know if this means that he's he's going to do great in standings or whatever, but I, I'm just I'm happy that he got to look good, and he really had to do a lot to put him down. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and, and I still look for him to do big things, right? I mean, I he's, I think Omega and is really the last big hurdle he has in the block, and everybody else he could feasibly beat. Um, maybe Elgin might be a little rough since the, I think they meet later in the tournament, and Elgin always gets better the longer this tournament goes. So, points wise, yeah. at least. I mean, exactly. You'd think that, you know, he, he I could see Yano doing a, a Yano on him or something, mm-hmm. but, like, you'd think he beats Kojima, beats Tonga, you, you'd think he beats Juice, but they have a rivalry from the Degushi Japan thing. Yep. Uh, so, you know, there's, there's always that, and, yeah, like you said, it'd be surprising to see him... Uh, beat Omega or anything after he's already lost Suzuki and Okada. Mm-hmm. So, not a lot of points left out there for him, but you never know. I expected him to win at least one of these big ones, and so far he hasn't. I mean, they still could do the upset with with Omega later on. I doubt so far Omega and Okada are both undefeated. They're both 3-0, and they've both always followed each other 
um, match-wise. So it feels like they're almost watching each other and like, okay, he won tonight. I really got to go out there and win or the other way around. And, you know, if, if they really go undefeated all the way up to the end, then it's almost like what was the point of doing another block, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true, though. You're right about that. But, the, the, I mean, the, these are the two mega powers pretty much at this point. So. Yeah. You know, again, they kind of stand tall about uh, above almost everybody else. Mm-hmm. So that's it's hard to say that they don't kind of deserve to go undefeated right now. Uh, I mean, like it's difficult to like you. You'd always you'd think that Okada would get a challenger out of this, but maybe they say no. We'll just mm-hmm. we'll just do it the more traditional way, where somebody just comes out and challenges him, or or you know pulls a Cody and goes to the backstage area and just gets in his face and they decide to make that the match and mm-hmm. he nobody nobody beats him except maybe Omega and, and that's it. All right, that very well could be because he's we're running out of people who I think could have feasibly beaten him. He right, he's already done with Elgin and he's already done with Yano who could have pulled a Yano. Um so he's still got Suzuki and, and we know Omega's the last night, so um unless evil is somehow gonna you know pull that out who would might be the only other person on here i could see doing it at this moment in time i ooh, i don't know yeah i i love to see juice get the one championship shot he hasn't yet yeah that cool is i just man that'd be so he did say he's the future so he, he did i just <laughs> i don't think new japan sees that just quite yet <laughs> no yeah no <laughs> like uh, i i don't know that it's going to happen. I mean, you're getting the G1 match. I think that would be enough for the guys. That, yeah, it's just other than Suzuki pulling an upset on him again, you know, or just pulling an upset period, uh, which I don't think they would. I think they would have him beat Suzuki. Right. Um, after Omega beat him, just, yeah, it's it's really hard uh, to <laughs> see this ending up any other way but that. But yeah, that's uh, that's going to do it here for us talking about the show. The Block B standings are currently Okada and Omega at 6 points. You got Minoru Suzuki at 4 with Evil, uh, also at 4. And then you got a bunch of guys at 2. Juice Robinson, Tamatanga, Sonata, Toriano, and Michael Elgin all at 2 points. And then Satoshi Kojima sitting there at the bottom with 0 points. Of course, now the Wednesday morning show, which will start in about... Three hours from the time that I am talking uh, is Block A, and uh, they're in the Sendai Hall Plaza for that one in Miyagi. So that's going to be, uh, you know, a tremendous crowd and a really cool sort of arena set up for that as well. Yeah, it's a beautiful arena if you've never seen this place before. I love the, the colors bounce off the dome and the, and the Coliseum in just this really cool way. Did you? Ever get to look at the card for that? I forgot. Uh, so for tonight, uh, you have Goto and Tanahashi main eventing. Co-main event is Naito and Nagata, which both of those should be tremendous. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you got Ibushi and Makabe, uh, Saber and Fale and Ishii and Yoshihashi, which could be a sleeper uh, match of the night as well there, too. I want to see if uh, Saber Jr. can uh, get Fale in, in one of his submissions or folly just creams him the so. size differential between the two is uh almost hilarious so yeah <laughs> it's so... uh that'll be interesting i just i don't see good things happening for good old zsj here <laughs> no I, I don't either but it uh, will be interesting to see him dry right uh so yeah and uh, of course we'll be back on thursday night uh, before we do, either before or after we do our, our other shows that we do on Thursdays, the NXT review and mm-hmm. the WTM Part 2 episode, uh, we'll be doing nights 7 and 8 together. And then Paul's going to go on a little vacation, and Mr. Tom Reese gets to come back to the podcast for the first time in a long while to talk uh, G1. So as much as I'm going to miss Paul, it is going to be nice to have a different sort of perspective. Uh, An older gentleman of the uh, New Japan fandom since before we were born. 
watching yeah. the show. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> so, yeah, but uh, well, I don't, I don't have to say uh, bye to Paul yet. But uh, thank you for listening. Uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, let us know in the comment section of either 411, YouTube, W2Net.com, wherever it is you're listening. Uh, you hit that subscribe button and you get all of our content. Uh, the other G1 shows that we've done, we've covered all the other ones uh, so far. And, uh, you know, until uh, we're here again on Thursday covering nights 7 and 8. We'll see you later, see you later everybody. Have a good one, guys. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.